The wilderness of the United States of America is home to many animal species, one of which is the apex predator in many forests, mountains, hills, and valleys, the grizzly bear. These monstrous animals can grow to over 700 pounds and stand at nine feet tall. Aggressive when provoked and staunchly protective of their young, grizzly bears are the last thing you want to encounter in the wild. Meeting a male grizzly bear is horrible, but meeting a mother bear with its cubs is another nightmare. Mother bears will stop at nothing to protect their young, something that Eddie Macklin found out in the worst way. Eddie Macklin was a retired Marine who decided that life in the countryside was much more appealing than dodging bullets. So when his service was up, he bought a ranch up in Wyoming and enjoyed the quiet life with his wife. Eddie enjoyed walks in the woods, hiking, and hunting white-tailed deer and pheasant in his free time. There wasn't much else to do besides enjoying those activities, so Eddie often had friends visit him to drink and go hunting. They served with him in the Marines for many years and agreed to remain friends after their service ended. Eddie crossed paths with one of the most dangerous animals in the world on November 2, 2002, and a trail cam that Eddie put up managed to capture most of the incident. Accompanied by two of his closest friends from his service, Eric and Nigel, the three decided they would see if they could spot some migratory elk in the forest connecting to Eddie's property. A large portion of the forest fell on Eddie's land, so they had the freedom to go wherever they wanted, and Eddie had placed trail cams on the main paths he would take, both for security reasons and for snapping videos for his wife to enjoy. Weeks after the incident, Eddie's wife checked the trail cams and found shocking footage of what happened to her husband that fateful day. She considered deleting it, but Eddie insisted on sharing his story and looking back at it as an experience worth remembering. November 2, 2002, 7.30 a.m. The camera's view of the trail is clear, no movement. 7.45 a.m. No audio. The camera is shaken by the tread of boots against the ground. Eddie Macklin is seen strolling with Eric and Nigel. They turn at Eddie's imperative to the camera and Eddie waves at it. He later stated that he was recommending the camera's brand to his friends. They move on. 8.15 a.m. The camera is shaken more vigorously than last time. Its perspective is obscured by a large, unidentifiable shape that moves in the direction of the group of hunters. As it moves further, it can be identified as a full-grown grizzly bear. Within the same time frame, the camera catches more movement later identified as two tiny bear cubs, Mother Bear. 9 a.m. A second trail cam captures the three hunters moving more slowly, looking for cover. They seem to be whispering amongst themselves. Moving forward, they identify some foliage and crouch down into the cover. They no longer move. 9.20 a.m. The hunters are still in their cover. Eddie steadies himself, tilting to the right, waiting for a moment and then firing a shot. Movement is seen, and several juvenile elk dash perpendicularly to them, running into the distance. The hunters stand up while patting Eddie on the back, congratulating him. They move forward to inspect their kill. Obstructed by the foliage, it appears that they are chatting about something. 9.25 a.m. The hunters are seen moving around, but it's not clear on the camera what they are doing. Eddie later stated that he was field dressing the elk to make it easier to carry home and break down later. Field dressing is butchering an animal after you've shot it, removing the internal organs and keeping the meat as fresh as possible. This process also makes the animal easier to transport if you're on foot. In Eddie's case, field dressing the elk was perfect because it was November and the cold would better preserve the meat. 10.30 a.m. Eric is seen carrying a long, sturdy piece of wood. Some movement is seen in the forest behind him. Moments later, Nigel and Eddie walk into the view of the camera, carrying the tied-up carcass on their shoulders. They leave the camera's view. 10.40 a.m. The movement noticed five minutes prior becomes more evident, and the same bear spotted on the first camera comes into view. It lingers around, presumably elk guts that the hunters left at the site of the kill. After sniffing for a few minutes, it begins walking after the hunters, 
cubs in tow. 11.15 a.m. The first trail cam has a view of movement again, spotting the hunters walking back home, casually joking among themselves and in good spirits. The party's mood is fouled when they collectively stop and look behind them. The bear is seen charging through the brush, enraged. The hunters carrying the elk stumble and try to escape, but the bear catches up and knocks Eddie down. 11.16 a.m. The bear is ramming its claws into Eddie's back, pulling him up by his backpack and tossing him to the side. He instinctively curls up into a ball and covers his neck as the bear bites into his shoulder and shakes its head. He's seen screaming in pain. Eric and Nigel scramble to get their rifles dropped in the commotion. The rifles can be seen jutting out from under the elk carcass, so they had to roll it over. The entire time, Eddie's wrists were in pain as the bear bit and slashed at his body. 11.18 a.m. Eddie's friends grab their rifles and aim at the bear, firing one shot each. The animal groaned in pain and released Eddie. It stumbled back and appeared to get ready to charge one of the other hunters. It moved forward, but a warning shot was fired into the sky, causing it to run away. Its cubs followed closely behind. 11.20 a.m. Eric acted quickly and rolled Eddie onto his back, checking if he was responsive. He appears to talk to them, albeit faintly. One of the men bandages his wounds and picks him up to carry him the short way back home, leaving his pack supplies and the elk on the trail. The only thing they bring with them is a rifle. One of Eddie's friends called an ambulance while rushing him back to his house, and they managed to arrive at the scene within the hour. When the hunters and his wife waited to see if he would survive, the doctor informed them that Eddie suffered from multiple lacerations and broken bones. His shoulder was dislocated and the joints were ripped to shreds, but he would live. When asked about the incident, Eddie said that his memory was foggy between the moment they saw the bear and when he woke up in the hospital. So he was thankful that his wife took the time to retrieve the footage just so he could convince himself that it had happened. He was puzzled that they had even seen a bear at that time, as they usually hibernate. Eddie's shoulder never fully healed because of the damage, so he had to live with the constant pain that put him out of commission for the better half of a year. When he felt well enough to leave his house and walk around, he could not muster the courage to enter the woods for a long time. He had served as a Marine for years, but nothing he experienced during his service was as traumatizing and scary as a brush with the full force of nature. Eventually, Eddie overcame his fear of the woods and went back to hunt with his friends a few years later. He had to adjust to shooting left-handed, but the thrill was back, and he was much more careful and respectful of bears, stating that he had entered its home and it was just acting on instinct. This scene was captured by the first trail cam the following day. 8.42 a.m. The elk carcass is lying on the trail along with the hunter's supplies. Some movement is seen from the bushes at the edge of the camera's view. A small bear cub is seen walking toward the carcass, followed by the same bear from the previous day and another cub. The mother bear bites into the corpse, pulls it closer to her cubs, and then moves away to let them eat. They remain there for the next 10 minutes, eating the elk. Eventually, the mother bear bites into the carcass and pulls it back into the forest, still attached to the pole. 